thank you all for coming uh, to this point near the state line between South Dakota and Iowa to make the point that what's going on behind us is a project that is by Iowa, for Iowa, in Iowa, and paid for by the taxpayers in South Dakota. And I, for one, as the next governor of South Dakota, am not going to stand for it. My message to Iowa is a simple one. Don't mess with South Dakota. You won't win. We're going to do everything we have to do to respond to it. Specifically, what that means is this. The day after Ben and I are elected, we will start a task force whose sole purpose is to review the options available to respond to this threat economically at our border. No one has any illusions about why we are standing here. The only reason this project is going forward is because across the state line are hundreds of thousands of South Dakota taxpayers that they intend to exploit in terms of building this casino and drawing people across the state line. This project is underway. It's not going away. The only meaningful response to this type of a project is to respond with a similar project within South Dakota. The task force that we will be convening will have that as one of the options available to it. We do not know at this point in time what all of those options include, and that's going to be the point behind the task force, but rest assured that as governor of South Dakota, I will not stop until we address this threat at our border. It is that important. The estimates indicate that upwards between 50 and 60 million dollars every year will leave South Dakota and come to Iowa. 50 to 60 million dollars. 13.5 million dollars in gaming tax revenue alone. Certainly an amount sufficient to provide a revenue stream for meaningful projects in South Dakota, which could include an event center for Sioux Falls. That's how much money we're talking about here at the border, and that's how critically important it is that South Dakota address this threat in a most serious way. I intend to do exactly that as the next governor of South Dakota. I'd like to now turn it over to my Lieutenant Governor nominee, Ben Art, and then we'd be glad to take any questions that any of you might have. Hey, good morning, everybody. As most of you probably know, I am from Iowa. I was born and raised in Iowa, but I simply uh, can't condone their efforts to pickpocket their neighbors, especially when it compromises the resources to educate our children and to create more opportunities in South Dakota. This is not an anti-Iowa message. This is certainly not a pro-gambling message, but it is pro-South Dakota through and through. This, what we have going on behind us here is a clear threat to South Dakota businesses, to our tribes, and we can't stand idly by while it happens. I think anybody who does this project would see that there's uh, certainly a net negative impact to the state of South Dakota. Just like the folks in Iowa did an assessment and realized that there was a net positive business impact to them. Dollars from South Dakota will come to support this casino, especially in the off season. Millions of dollars and the, and the issues associated, the gambling uh, treatment, the increased law enforcement needs, those will come back across the border uh, to South Dakota. So again, Scott and I's commitment uh, to South Dakota today is that we won't stand idly by while this happens. We are going to address the issue, and we are committed to that. Thank you. Now, if I could just add a couple things, and then we'll take any questions that you might have. Let's, uh, let's deal uh, up front with what you know will be uh, the criticisms of the position we take today. One is from folks inside South Dakota who are going to say, uh, you are increasing gaming. We're not increasing gaming. Look behind me. This is happening. It's going to happen regardless of what we do in South Dakota, so we may as well recoup what we can within our own borders. But second of all, the criticism that will no doubt come from Iowa, which is, hey, this is regional economic development. Don't get in the way of regional economic development. Well, let me tell you, there's nothing regional about the fact that a state like Iowa 
has a 90% by Iowa requirement. That is, 90% of the goods and services that go into this project must come from Iowa. There's nothing regional about that. Iowa has a law that says they'll set aside a certain amount of gaming revenue for the treatment of people with gaming addictions. But you have to be from Iowa. In other words, 90% of the revenue funding this casino is going to come from the taxpayers in South Dakota, but 100% of the money available for gaming problems goes to the citizens of Iowa. There's nothing regional about that concept. That is simply the exploitation of one state by another based on this artificial thing called a state line. Well, we're here today to say in South Dakota we're going to defend our borders. We're going to do everything we can under the law to evaluate our options the day after we're elected governor and lieutenant governor of South Dakota. Thank you all for being here. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. I'll start, Scott. I, I think a lot of people are saying that this is going to give some jobs and some South Dakotans will benefit with jobs. Uh, you mentioned the Definitely, there will be some criticisms of your stance. Uh, what would you respond to that? My response would be this. Uh, the requirement under Iowa law is that for an Iowa project, they need 90% of the goods and services to come from Iowa. That doesn't leave much for South Dakota. But if the state of Iowa wants to say to us, oh, this is just regional, my response is, okay, make it regional. Say that the percentage of folks who come over to patronize this casino is equal to the percentage of folks from that state that you're going to hire. That means 90% of those dirt movers would be run by South Dakotans. This company would be a South Dakota company, and the folks running this casino and the golf course and the pro shop would be South Dakotans 90%. But we all know that the exact opposite is what they intend. What they intend is for all the money to come from South Dakota, but all the jobs to be held in Iowa. That's not regional economic development. There's already another proposal that some business people in Sioux Falls are working with in terms of the plan to drive. Is this something you're involved in as well? Have you talked to them about their proposal? I have not talked to the folks in Sioux Falls about it. I am aware of the proposal, just generally speaking, uh, Jonathan. I will say that that's one of the things that should be on the agenda for the task force in 95 days or 96 days, right around the corner of the RMB. Everything should be on the table. I can't think of anything we would want to exclude in terms of options. Can you talk more about how an event center would be tied and possibly tied into this? Simply, the revenue that's generated from the South Dakota project competing with this one would I assume would throw off a similar revenue stream and the projections that the amount of tax dollars from South Dakota, taxpayers' dollars, coming here would generate, I think, $13.5 million in tax revenue annually. So that's the revenue stream that we are looking at as a possibility. The event center is one of the options that's available. There are probably other options. But certainly, on a, as a part of the task force, we would want to include the city of Sioux Falls. We would want to include Minnehaha County, probably uh, uh, Lincoln County. We would want to include law enforcement because they have a stake in what kind of a, an option is eventually chosen. All of those folks need to come together. I might also say that this task force would include not just Democrats and not just Republicans, but also independents. And it's going to be the first and best example of exactly how a political administration is going to differ from the current administration. Everyone will be at this table.